plays for bands. Um, surprising that they would go here. Liquid gonna feel very comfortable. Four wins, one loss, one tie, and no Jackal. EG starting on defense, so they'll take Jackal out of the equation, an operator that is well-loved by Liquid. I would imagine that Liquid will likely take out one of the hard breachers here. No, they'll do what Latin America does best. They'll remove Thatcher from the action. It's interesting, oftentimes with Latin Americans, you see them change their play style quite a bit. And I know FaZe Clan's one where they, depending on who they're playing up against, they'll play a little bit more aggressively against Latin Americans. Kind of played a bit smarter, I would say, versus uh, the world competition. Maestro off of the board is a big one for me because he's not one you typically see gone. It's usually going to be Echo Mira, especially at this yeah. event. We've seen Echo slip through a couple times on Cafe, actually, with Mira being the other ban here. I, I mean, it really comes down to what EG doesn't want to play around. It's going to be Mira, so... Echo will be available, and you know there's Echo players on both of these teams. So we expect to see Echo get played out on Cafe. For some reason, I think that Maestro just has a disproportionate impact. He's got a, a I think a lot of people would argue, a better gun than Echo. His utility is exceptionally strong. And the way that Cafe plays out with the long distances from where you're going to be entering, every single site you're going to need to make sure that your utility actually takes out those evil eye cams. It's a lot harder to do that if there's a Jaeger on the board, if there's something in the way versus taking out a yokai. In terms of operators, I don't think anything uh, too crazy here. The gridlock being brought by Moringa is an operator that maybe uh, not a whole lot of people are super comfortable with just yet. Geo6 picking the Valkyrie could suggest something aggressive early on. I know Evil Geniuses are a team that are not one to shy away from getting Attack aggressive early on. And in a best of three like this, up against a very strong team like Team Liquid, and a team that really you're not that familiar with, they're not that familiar with you, you haven't played each other before. Um, I think it would be exciting to start this game off with a bit of a run out, spawn peak, something aggressive like that. And uh, if it works out for EG, strike some fear into the hearts of Team Liquid. Yeah. I mean, the funny thing is, is is that Cafe is still, I don't think, fleshed out fully to the point of where you know you're going to go first. And I mean, even when it does get to be a bit more routine, I think it's going to inhabit a role very similar to Consulate, where you've got three very viable sites. Teams won't usually go to lobby first, but you can go downstairs to garage, you can go upstairs to console office. It doesn't really matter. Same with bank, where you can go upstairs and CEO if you want to start or go to CCTV. It's a 1A, 1B type scenario. Uh, a lot of teams will opt to run uh, reading room as well. We've seen some teams go oh, yeah. there first, even though it's not the most common. It's definitely doable for the defenders. And as the attacking team, you need to make sure that your lineup is flexible enough. This is the consulate. This is the clubhouse idea. This is the villa idea, because you don't know exactly where somebody's going to go, like on a map, say, like Border, or when Oregon was in the map pool. A lot of times it's like, oh, are you going to be going up to kids' bedroom? No, you're usually going to be going downstairs, so. By this point in time, Liquid have figured out, of course, what the bomb site is going to be, and it is going to be on that bottom floor. And there's two sort of philosophies for how you want to take this, right? How much pressure are you going to put on this top floor, and how many... It depends a lot on how many roamers, right, EG want to actually play up here. It looks like they are playing quite a few people. MVK is going to be the main one here on Mozzie, sort of just running around this third floor. And Liquid could either choose to ignore that, sort of just stay on that first floor, go into the bakery, see what they can do, or they can go top down and try to clear it. Seems like they're going for that ladder option, right? They're all kind of still outside of the building, going for their drones. But as soon as they can find somebody inside of there, and as soon as they can like pinch him down and get this kill, ideally without losing anybody, and ideally pretty quickly, um, I think they're going to be in a good position to sort of get on down and then start focusing on that bomb site through the floorboards and stuff like that. It's a, a strategy that we've seen when people are defending Kitchen is that you want to cut up as much denial on that third floor as possible, right? I know that we talk often about the Mozzie mute combo. This map is where it seems to shine the most. A lot of that is because you're going to be dropping into narrow doorways and you're going to be going through narrow corridors for most of your engagements until you get your hard destructors in position. In this case, unsurprising, you're going to use one exothermic charge to blow up the side wall next to the bakery, and then you've got the actual bakery wall, which is where Moringa had his back turned to, where I would imagine the other exothermic charge will go. While this is happening, you've got your roamers up top, clearing as best as you can, and while it's going to work out quite successfully, Palu takes out Mo, and the newest member of EG is no more. MVK crucial right now. If he gets a kill or something, equalizes, that's going to be big. If he just dies, puts his team into a three on five, that's going to be really awful for his squad, right? Trying to defend on that when your roamers have done absolutely nothing. Not even really buying all that much time. Liquid, I think, are in good position for 49 seconds with the block. Already opening up the bomb site. You see, there's a bit of a split push. They have people down below, and here's the first engagement for MVK. He will shoot a couple of bullets and then just walk on off. There's a little bit of damage to Master. Happy with that because now you've put some fear into his heart. You can back off, and he's going to actually come with the flank and will get it down. Eventually, going to be able to get that off, too. So it's a four on four. He's 
easily shutting down Nesk. Now you can try to play those four boards that the enemy team is trying to go for, and you still have this top floor advantage. A lot of EG players still in the bomb site, so as soon as Blitzer try to get on in, it's not going to be danger. PSK is still worried about the roamers up top, right? MVK being so elusive, and despite the fact that Mo is the first death, I think he's got a strong hold here on the first floor with 15 seconds. They're really not getting to the bomb site in time. Moringa maybe going to open things up in the site with Necrox going down. A miss C4 from Young. That's going to be a bit harmful for him. He cannot blow that up or else he's going to die with it. There's a gunfight, but Sexy K comes out on top. Another engagement. Geo wins it, though. NVK with another one from above. There's just no time for Liquid, though. No point. Oh, but they're going for the plant. Actually, this could work. There's the C4, but again, it's a missed throw from Geo. NVK gets a kill with triple kill, but now go for this last one. He just doesn't shoot his shot. Sexy K with so little HP. NVK is being thrown around up top. Oh, this is going to come down to the wire. It's going to be slowing down just a little bit. Geo on the floor, no real chance to be able to pick him back up. And being so far off site, I mean, MVK, I said he was in a strong position, and he was. But now he can't really get back down for the disable. He's got to go so quickly. He's got to find this kill on a sexy cake and get the disable as fast as he can. Sexy cake's still inside a bakery, so he can sort of try to buy his time. Not aware that the player might be inside of the site. He's going to go for the pickup on Geo. He really don't have time for the disable. One person's got to stick it right now while the other one goes for the gunfight. Sexy Cake's going to be forced to try to push on in. Defenders unless they can just go for it. They're still not defusing. He gets the first kill. Now they will, and Sexy Cake, beautiful job, steps on up, gets the 2k, and Team Liquid take the first round. Very interesting decision making there from NVK to get Geo up off the ground. They had zero intel on where Sexy Cake was played out, which was very similar to what Liquid had zero info on NVK himself up on that second floor. And Liquid, I think, after Palu rotated downstairs and you had Nesk lose the fight up top, Liquid's priority said, you know what? Let's try and get the plant down in an area where NVK is not sitting over top of. We've gotten to a point where Cafe has been played enough that when you have somebody upstairs in train or you have somebody upstairs inside of dining hall, you know where the default plant spots are so you can shoot out the floor. That's exactly what NVK was doing. Even though he wasn't on the actual site, he was playing aggressively above it. He had full control over a lot of the default plant sites strictly because he'd shot out the floor. When you're playing Mozzie, you've got the super shorty as your secondary. It's a very advantageous position. You've got a great kit for it. Liquid read that and said, let's go elsewhere. So they opted to plant, very similar to where both Young and NVK are on the map, just over by those garbage bins in the corner. And Geo came painstakingly close to being able to take it back. Missed his Nitro Cell, two missed Nitro Cells on the round for EG. Those are some sloppy mistakes that could have netted a kill. Young possibly could have won the round with the C4 at the onset. But Geo pushes on in, he gets downed. NVK doesn't have information. I think Geo was trying to scout it out and Sexy Cake just headed for the hills. And at that point, you're flying blind. You might as well try to get your, seconds remaining. your Patriot up, I suppose you could call him. And Five seconds left. You were out of time. By the time Geo got up off the ground, they were basically out of time, as you noted. And yeah, that's really it. The evitation coming out from Liquid is something you only see if teams are very comfortable on a map that's being their most played in the recent months. Unsurprisingly, they would be uh, proficient on it. But EG, maybe thinking they can adapt too. They're going to come back downstairs to Kitchen. So comfortable in this bomb site, comfortable that they can hold on to it. I'm going to be interested in this roam. The operators haven't really changed for Evil Geniuses, so it's likely still to be a situation where uh, Mo and MVK are up on those top floors. Um, perhaps not, though. I mean, just because your operators aren't changing doesn't mean your playstyle isn't changing. MVK is up here, though. And Mo is as well. So it's gonna be the same situation with the roamers here. I wanna see Mo maybe live a little bit longer because last time him dying early, yeah, MVK was still pretty successful in terms of stalling things out and keeping that top floor control. Um, but it would have maybe gotten them a couple more kills a little bit quicker if Mo hadn't been the opening death. I mean, to be fair, Mo did control a solid, I would say, minute and a half of the map, but he didn't hold the map control that was wanted uh, for EG. I, I mean, Having Mo die early, you're absolutely right. You get a really good hand off of the table, and you have a lot of breathing room for Liquid. You can see that Liquid running the Nomad and Gridlock, they're very invested in making sure that with how aggressive EG roams, there are limited opportunities for EG to be able to get back in for a possible site retake. And because of the structure of Liquid's setup, you expect them to go for an execute and take that push onto the site fast and lock EG out. Now, credit to NVK and credit to some of the other members of EG for stalling that push so that Sexy Kate got it down in the dying seconds of the first round. But this time, EG, I expect, is going to play a little bit more passive. They know the lineup that Liquid's going to be bringing for the second time in a row. And even now, we're at a minute and a half, and there's been zero engagement Ooh. until then. And it's Ness getting the opening pick onto NVK. And it's Mo who will now do his best NVK impression, trying to fill in the gap. 
And Esker very upset at the fact that he lost his gunfight when he was up here last round. And Mo also upset, gets his first kill of the game, getting a four on four, but eventually traded out by Paula. So that's going to be Liquid taking this player advantage early. And again, it's been a little bit faster, and they've actually been able to kill both of the roamers. So this is huge for them. They still have just under a minute to try to get onto the bomb site. Not the most time ever, but I mean, it's doable, right? There's a very good time for them to be trying to push on in. They can see a lot of this utility, and they're starting to open up the wall right now. If they got people up above trying to go for the support, trying to pinch these players on evil geniuses, push them out of positions where they want to be playing in while their planters go on in and get the bomb down uh, and planted, that'll be huge. Paula, with his second kill of the round, takes down Geo, so he's going to fall inside of the bomb. kitchen. That's, again, through those floorboards. That's what I'm talking about. You've got to be so careful if you're evil geniuses. The people above you are going to make your life very difficult. It's back just down to Young and Necrox, the two anchors over on evil geniuses to hold this one down as four more Liquid players try to run on into their bomb site. 15 seconds, so time is on their side, but there's no doubt in my mind Liquid are going to make this happen very quickly here. Necrox, I think, 11 in hand, waiting for somebody coming through this castle barricade. Sure, just to reinforce barricade, and you will get one Young and another one. They're equalized, but this plant's still going down. If the sniper still lands, it looks like it will. Oh, but just in time, it happens. One player left alive on Liquid, and can Paula do it? Goes for the 4K. If this happens for him, then this will be huge. Going for these Nomads. Still approaching. There's somebody behind that wall, though. He's got the pings. If it works out, oh, just behind that... Kitchen service, oh, throwing in still more stun grenades. He's just gotta hold on, he doesn't Attacker go for this aggression. Necrox and Young, the pressure's all on them to push in and take this peak. They've got two of them, so they can go for the trade. He sees the first one, this is the second! A big play coming out, and there's two clutches in a row from Liquid to make him up 2-0. Exact same spot as Sexy Cake had as well, right by the bakery counter. And my oh my, that AK that it comes in the hands of Nomad is not all that accurate after the third or fourth shot. That thing starts to bobble all around and it was handled deftly by Palu. The retake from EG, or the attempted retake from EG, very lackluster yet again. Same thing from Liquid. They go upstairs, they're able to push out one of the roamers. Mo exists for a longer period of time, which is what NVK did in round number one. And Liquid say, okay, we've got one of the people that we need up top. There's gonna be another, let's wait a little bit longer, and then have everybody else coalesce and go down through that first floor. And with Liquid banning Thatcher, and then going on to attack first, I cannot begin to stay, talk about how crucial both one soft destructor, either the buck or the sledge, in this case it's going to be the Attacker sledge for Nesk, and, and the IQ for PSK are. Because you have to try and maneuver Attacker around the denial the that's being set up by EG. In this case, EG's running three denial operators, two for Intel and two technically overlap for your hard destructor. You've got bandit batteries set down, you've got mute jammers, and then you've got Mozzie as well, who's gonna be setting those pests to be able to take that intel, that crucial intel away from you. With PSK putting himself in non-combat positions, which is how he's done the first two rounds, he's able to scope out and pick apart EG's defense from that second floor. And he can't do that without a successful entry. Nesk was successful on that second round. PSK was able to take it all away from EG, and that's why we saw a faster passage into the actual site from Liquid. I am a little surprised that EG is gonna go back down to the kitchen for the third time in a row. You know, they say if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen, and in this case, I think it's very applicable. EG has not been able to stand the heat at all through two rounds. You've got a very viable bomb set up on that third floor, and I'm surprised that we're not seeing more of an investment from that from EG. I think I get it, though, because if you talk about Evil Geniuses, you look at those last two rounds, I mean, they only were won because of some crazy clutches coming out from Liquid. Both times with the strategies and sound from EG, I think they're saying to themselves, you know what, if we just don't let people get 4Ks, if we don't let this clutch potential happen from Liquid, we can do this. Perhaps you're thinking, you know, if we just don't let this get planted, I think it's still very much a good bomb save for EG. And I think they want to play it again, right? When they come around in round number six, they can play this again, assuming that they win it here. Um, if they choose to go somewhere else, then they're only going to get one more shot on this bomb site, assuming they win it. So uh, I think they're sort of thinking in that sense, like, we want to come back here eventually. It's a, it's a little similar lineup. I, I'm very interested, I would say as to why Nesk went onto the sledge instead of the buck. I think he was probably anticipating a push or a, a defense on that third floor. I, I don't think they were expecting a third kitchen in a row, but EG is running things very similarly here. You know, they've, it, they've subbed out the Valkyrie, they've got a lesion, so there's gonna be a little bit more detection for them because, I mean, Valkyrie gets felled so quickly by PSK that you're... <laughs> that you, you don't really have the utility the best. This is chuckling at Sexy Cake struggling with the Mute Chamber. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was a great jiggle peek. Very much so. Um, the Geo, as you said, being uh, brought 
bringing the Legion, um, it's gonna be interesting. He's not playing up top, so he's not gonna have those, like, later goo mines trying to slow people down. Um, but hopefully the initial ones can sort of help out his roamers up top, who, again, have been doing pretty good. Um, but that last round in particular, they did both end up dying in the first two minutes or so of the round, so they weren't able to come in a little bit later. Liquid are now pushing down the stairs and actually going right for the bomb site. It seems like this time they're sort of ignoring those guys up top, right? You've got Paula down here. Focusing in uh, from the main corridor, trying to get on a different angle. You're not coming from the bakery. You're going to just break this on open and go for the plant. Oh, everybody inside of you. Jeez, they're kind of caught off guard. Moringa opens things up with a kill and a neck rock. So that's an anchor down and another one. Beautiful shot coming out through this soft wall. And they've kind of taken control of this plant. Beautifully done. They just need to put down these uh, track stingers. This would be great. Mo scrambling to get on back down to this bomb site. You see MVK as well. How do you even get through all of this? There's so many needles that are getting thrown into your foot. And you're the one with the legions. Oh, no. A couple of nitro cells using all their explosives to try to clear these, but still not going to be enough. Marinko with his third kill of the round. Well, the ace, these last two players on Evil Genius is just trying to like funnel in through one little doorway. Paul is going to have an opportunity here to get another kill for the board. Evil Genius is just looking so lost in this one. They weren't expecting the aggression. Team looking at so fast. Moringa with four. No, can't get the ace. He's down on the ground. Mo shuts him down. But I don't know if it's going to be enough. He still has a lot of opportunities. He still has a lot to go through. There's so little time on that plant. I think it's pretty much over for the young gunner on Evil Geniuses. On the Jagger, he will run on into sight. Tracks him in front of him to try to shoot his way through, but there's no time at all, and Paula shuts him down. Round three for Liquid, three attacks on Kitchen. And now Liquid is starting to realize the pattern of Rome that we see from EG up on that second floor. And what is Liquid doing? They're just completely ignoring it now at this point. You don't have NVK up there sitting over top of those kill holes watching the default plant spots. There's just no coverage from EG on that second floor. And Liquid know this. And that's what Liquid is just taking full advantage of. They're just rushing in. And after they did some considerable drone work, a good example of that was PSK picks up his drone right off the hop, goes up, sets out two drones immediately and starts droning that second floor for the rest of his team because he and Sexy Cake will be your dedicated support operators, or sort, support players, rather, for the entirety of this matchup. You have PSK basically guiding this team, and once again, I want to give a lot of credit to the way that he's been playing so far, because his contributions really haven't been on that scoreboard. If you're not paying attention, you would see that PSK is lagging behind the rest of his team, but absolutely not the case. In this instance, two rounds, not just gadget detection, not just being able to take them out to allow the hard breachers to be able to get in, but also the extensive amount of drone work and the amount of time that he's spending telling his team where to go. Liquid's attacks got progressively better over those three rounds, and it was called very, very well. So you get to round number three, and Liquid realizes, hey, We've had some troubles on that second floor. We lost the opening fight, if you remember, when Ness got taken down in round number one. They took out Mo and then immediately lost Ness. Round number two, Ness wins the fight against NBK. A little bit greater relief. Round three, you don't even need to take the fight on that second floor. You just go straight for broke in the kitchen. And then you have Moringa landing some pretty extraordinary shots at very close range. And EG have no counter to it. And because EG swapped off of the Valkyrie, they don't have any bulletproof cameras up. They don't have a maestro. They were starved for intel. Their only real intel operator was that lesion. I think Paula and Moringa have been huge, not just because they're top on the full, uh, scoreboard in terms of frags, but, I mean, the utility they're bringing here, the track singers, these nomad uh, charges, they've been so, so effective in stopping evil geniuses from getting on these roams, coming back to the site. Three times they've planted now, and three times they've won the round. I don't think that's any sort of coincidence. We're at bar here in round number four, so again, if they EG wants to try Kitchen a fourth time um, and they win it, they are not going to go back here again. Uh, I think they're probably a little bit off that bomb site. Perhaps if these uh, bomb sites go really well for them, maybe bar they win it, reading room they win it, um, they'll come back around to kitchen try the fourth time. Uh, but I'm sure it's put a bad taste in their mouth. The cooking perhaps not up to their standards because it's been a little bit tough for evil geniuses defending on that bomb site. Hopefully here on bar they'll have a little bit more luck. NVK already taking a little bit of damage, and there's a run out as Paula shuts it down, expecting it. The call was made. Geo, nice try, buddy, but it's not going to happen. Evil geniuses, the opening death again. That's not exactly a bad choice for EG to try and make, to try and take that fight. Uh, a gamble, sure, but you've got so many people that are vulnerable on Repel on Cafe, right? Especially on that third floor. And Liquid are not particularly interested in taking the hatches at the moment. They're not putting any presence up over towards the skylight. Liquid is solely just staying on Repel, and which they will likely move on into piano, which is exactly what we see right now. They all go in on a piano once they've been able to take control of that side of the map. A lot of teams on defense will relinquish control of Cigar and Piano because they set farther back in Cocktail. And your most important operator in that instance is going to be Young on Echo. Echo is going to be absolutely pivotal here. Keep in mind that a lot of teams like to run a C4 down below, and EG is doing that as well. NBK on the Mozzie will be playing somewhere near that 90 cam. 
over by Train, and because of this, he's got that C4 in hand. He can not just control White Stairs where he's sitting right now, but he can also rotate back down quickly to get the plant denial from the C4 from below. Look, but kind of running out of time here, but they have a little bit of control on the uh, piano right now, and they're going to start to open up a couple of these walls. Young, ready for somebody to come out onto the balcony, but nobody's just here yet. There's 35 seconds on the clock, and only one death so far. I think Liquid kind of got to get a move on here sooner rather than later. They're all still on their drones, and they're setting things up. As long as they're fast, this isn't a problem, but they really got to get going, and they kind of have the pressure on them. Defender MVK sort of open things up for Evil Geniuses, and it's a second run out this time. It is going to be successful. Paula not able to catch off the player in that time. The Nomad being uh, caught by Rhino a little bit ironic, and Madden DK going down as well. Ness being able to find that one, be able to plant two. There's some grenades down below, which they might have to worry about, but Sexy Cake looks like he's going to be able to get this plant off and see if they can stop him. Nope, there he goes, and Marine goes watching the angles too. They've got pings on the players who are down. It's only Mo in a one-on-four. We've seen this before, and I mean, yeah, he's a great player, give him that, but this is still so tough, and when his team's not supporting him with that, Sexy Cake shuts down the round, Liquid win it again. So here's something a little bit unprecedented. We are four rounds in, and there has been a successful diffuser planted every single round. This is really astonishing. And honestly, some of the four worst rounds I've seen EG play ever as a team. Yep. This harkens back to DreamHack Montreal last year when EG got smoked before making it to the semifinals. At, I believe it was at the hands of Rogue in the quarterfinals. Uh, almost as bad of a performance as uh, up against G2 in Paris. And even though there is a new look to EG, and there are differing expectations here among people, not only has EG looked quite dreadful on a lot of these rounds, but more importantly, Liquid have played exceptionally. The calls for Liquid have been top tier. And because of this, you're able to just snag all that map control so quickly after you take one or two picks. Geo goes for the run out, that's fine, that's totally excusable. You've got a Nomad and a Gridlock Defenders on the board, so maybe you have to be a bit more careful attackers. about that. NVK goes for the exact Bomb same thing, and it makes it work, but that's so much later in the round that by the time NVK can get back, it's not really a, much of a factor because even though Liquid loses somebody to NVK, they can make the call. It's going to take him five, six, seven seconds to get back up into a position where he can actually do something from that spot. So we might as well take the 4v4, which they had at this point. They still had one person down below, Nesk with the grenades in hand, as you noted, and Liquid just cut off the site. They tossed out a smoke, a lot of teams don't utilize smokes all that effectively. Liquid is one of the few teams that do, whether it be Dokubi, whether it be Gridlock, whether it be Capital, whether it be Jackal. And they were able to just prevent EG from really knowing A, where the plant was going down, and B, trapping EG and not allowing EG to push out because you also saw the drop from Skylight from Liquid. They had coverage on Heaven, they had coverage on Cocktail, they had coverage on Bar Backstore. There was nowhere for EG to go on that particular retake. And it was a, a successful plant, like I said, for the fourth time in a row for Team Liquid. That's why I was confused that Evil Genius let this map slip through the ban phase. You can tell they're not all that strong on it, um, but they go here anyways. They're trying to adapt a little bit, right? You see Geo switching over to the Echo. Um, definitely a different change of pace in terms of operators. Not quite the same as Valkyrie and Legion, which he's been playing in the past couple of rounds. It's Kitchen again as well, so we're here for the fourth time in round number five. They have yet to win it. Again, it's kind of excusable, right? And I like that there's still adaptation. Four plants in a row, as you've noted, this Echo and those Yokai drones can try to stop slow that down. Spinning if a plant is going, you can stop that. And uh, that might be the thing that Evil Geniuses have been struggling with, right? These retakes have been a little bit difficult because they've got so many people roaming, because they've got so many people off-site. If they can just stop that plant from going down altogether, even if it's only once or twice to slow that down, you get your people into position a little bit quicker, I think that's a, a good idea. Still yet to see PSK hit the scoreboard. This is something that we can focus on just a little bit, because as much as praise as we've given him, Team Liquid haven't needed him at all, and that's a huge boon for the rest of the team. I think Liquid realized that they could play this very similar to where, the way they've done it before, but Young is going to be getting a lot more aggressive. He loses the Nitro Cell. It's a gamut. It doesn't work out, and now control of the front of Bakery is Liquid's. You put two and two together, you get the bakery wall next. As long as PSK is there to be able to remove the denial, well, then you're in really good shape. Liquid assessing whether or not they even want to go for a bakery take, or if they want to pull off that exact same back uh, take that they did last time. Go for the freezer area and just simply win your gun duels. But for Liquid, this is very routine in comparison to what we've seen so far. A big difference is that EG, instead of being up on that second floor, will now be on the third floor, and it's not going to work out. Both Mo and NVK worked so well together yesterday. They'll open up the hatch as we see the Jaeger's corpse uh, tumble through the top hatch onto that second floor, leaving NVK in a position. And a beautiful shot on the Nesk. These are two exceptionally talented players, and you've got to be able to hit your shots depending on who you are. 
to be able to walk away from that one alive. Struggling to stay alive, maybe you could say, with the Roamers in uh, this game for Evil Geniuses. They've been the opening death five rounds out of five. This one included, but at least it's a retrade, right? You're still able to get a couple of kills. That's super important for the guys, uh, NVK and Mo. NVK able to get that one, so great. Now you can kind of continue trying to hold on to this top floor, right? Paula's still up here, so you've got to maybe deal with that if you're NVK, but just distracting him could be good enough. And Liquid, they're going to have most of their players focused on this first floor, focused on the bomb site. They even might be uh, escaping from the second floor here. And you can see Sexy Cake already looking to the bomb site and Geo going down. That really sucks. That's your echo. So that plant that I was talking about, they're not going to be a factor. It's going to be all up to the other guys on Evil Genius to stop the plant from going down. MVK doing a good job, but he's not aware of the people who are around him. That's his teammates. We're all going to go down to the Moringa. Now, MVK again needs to come back into the bomb site. And again, he's failing to be able to get back in. And the anchors can't hold on when the Romans are so far away. Now, there was an attempted plant there, but the kills came in <laughs> before the diffuser actually got down. Now, We've heard a lot of teams talk about CAFE and the fact that because it's still new and because teams are still figuring out strategies on it, that it's very defender-sided at the moment. And yet, not only do we have five consecutive victories for Liquid, four of which had the diffuser down through one through four, but they're doing these on attack. And that is dreadfully bad for EG. Almost marching towards a 7-0. And Liquid 7-0'd G2 on this map. Let's not forget that yesterday, that's what happened to propel that series to a third map. It was a 7-0 victory for Team Liquid, and they are barreling towards that right now as well. It's, you know, 12 uncontested rounds between those two matchups right now for Team Liquid, proving their worth. And I have to be super critical about EG, but MVK said it best on the interview yesterday. He's got six kills, the rest of his team still quite lagging behind. Let's focus on NVK's comments yesterday. He said we've only had a couple days of practice with Mo. True. We don't know how to attack. On some maps, they know how to defend. Clearly on Cafe, they don't know how to defend right now. That will come with time, not to excuse this poor performance, because, man, this is a really bad performance from EG so far. And, I, I mean, to a lot of people, it might not give them a lot of hope for a consulate on map two, but EG should be more comfortable there. Definitely. They're not going to pick a map where they haven't done their practice. They haven't everything out. And I think, yeah, this is very likely one of the maps where maybe they just haven't gotten around to yet in terms of their practice. Young going for a spawn peek right here outside of the bakery doorway. Doesn't look like he found anybody. He's going to retreat. An odd player to go for it. Not something you would typically see from uh, him. Definitely more of a passive player. Um, and so maybe because of that, he's not going to stay over there for too, too long. But you kind of like to see it, right? Evil Genius is just throwing stuff at the wall, hoping something can stick. They're on Kitchen again. This is the fifth time they're going to try it. Will it be the fifth time they fail? That's the, uh, the main question. NVK is prepping a C4 for when this Castle Barricade gets opened up. And I kind of like this idea. They just need to not shoot him. Uh, the C4 got shot out instead. A little bit slow because he had to run away and both shoot that... Uh, explode that C4 too. So it's difficult, right? But it's a little bit more aggressive from Evil Genius. And there's a lot more focus on Bakery. So perhaps this is what they need to stop Team Liquid from taking control of that so easily and then just shooting the anchors as they try to hide inside a kitchen. No, I really like that EG has changed this up. They've gone for a full court press on Bakery. They're going to hold the windows. They're going to hold the front of Bakery. It's something that we've seen Empire do as well. So you stack up your bodies in positions where you have to commit Liquid to fight in this main room first, just off the side of Bakery, and then head towards Red Stairs, maybe even take Coat Check and VIP area. They're going to be thwarted, Liquid will be, by the Mozzie drone that's in the bottom of the window. So that's information that will be held against them, or at least away from them for the time being. But the one thing that Liquid has done really well is to cut off routes for EG to be able to come back after the push occurs. And a big part of that has been the double up on both Nomad and Gridlock. I don't think Ness was expecting to take quite a beating there as he's lobbing grenades on in towards the back of Bakery. Fires in through a part of that bakery display, which you can't actually shoot through, and the grenades won't catch anything. So EG doing an excellent job of bleeding time here, but this is one of those defenses where when it collapses, it really goes down real fast. I think it's the best one they've seen so far. It's definitely different, and MVK opening things up is really nice. Find Sexy Cake, but there's a player in behind that bakery. It's going to be very difficult, but Mo, it's him, and he's going to hit the shot that he needs to. Paula going down, Moringa finally answers back with one, but he gets traded, so Mo really stepping up in this one. He gets his third for Evil Geniuses, leaving it all to PSK, and he's up on the first floor. He was going for the old strategy where they just clear out those top floors and deal with those roamers, but there's no roamers to be found, and now PSK will realize that all of his teammates are gone. He just needs to deal with the last four defenders and Evil Geniuses all by himself. A little bit of uh, sight work going down from Evil Geniuses gives away somebody's position back behind there. But all oh, on the bottom of the stairs, PSK finally gets one for this game, but it's next Crocs for the trade, and Evil Geniuses get their first round of the board in round number six. Low impact kill for PSK, but yeah, he breaks the donut, as you mentioned. And 
Now you've got EG at least salvaging one round before we switch sides. A 5-1 on attack for Liquid is as dominant a victory as you could expect here on Cafe, barring obviously a 6-0. Liquid on defense. Now, this will be interesting. Keep in mind, Liquid banned Thatcher, and they did so knowing full well that they would be starting on attack. They would have strategies that didn't require Thatcher as an operator. And Thatcher is one operator that EG plays quite a bit on a number of maps. Cafe, Thatcher sees a decent amount of play, especially when you're attacking out of that third or second floor. Second floor, which we actually haven't seen yet because EG hasn't gone there. So Liquid know that they can play around it. How much is it going to impact EG? Well, if you look at EG's lineup, they weren't really sure what Necrox was going to do. He was on the Lion, he moved to a Dokubi, now he's six picks off to the IQ. And I would imagine that EG are anticipating a top floor defense. They'd be correct in that case, because most teams do start here. It was a bit unorthodox for EG to go down to the bottom floor, not just once, twice, three times, four times, five times. But if you're EG here, you're going to line up with that. You can take control of Piano and Cigar relatively easily. You have hatch control quite well as well because you have the sledge on the board. You can keep somebody up top on Skylight, maybe have somebody entry down on the main floor, the second floor. I would look to see Mo possibly entry alone on first or second floor and crouch walk his way as Ash all the way up to one of the stairs. And because Team Liquid doesn't have a Legion on the board, the only thing that's going to stop him would be if he gets spotted by a Yokai drone. Depending on where Sexy Cake puts those Yokai drones, there could be a blind spot that Mo can just very stealthily go up and exploit, in which case Liquid would then need to pivot, providing that Mo gets that opening kill. But we're at a point now where every single round from here on out for EG is going to be must win because they've already lost so much damn momentum in this game. That match point awaits Team Liquid after one single round victory. And you don't really want to be going to consulate down 6-1-7 or 7-1-7-2-7-3. 7-3. So moralizing, you have to play on your map with that scoreline, you know, hanging over your head. 100%. And Evil Geniuses, I mean, as you said, this is kind of the time where they got to pick it up. We could see Liquid. Nesk is down on that uh, second floor and sort of doing a little bit of a roam strategy. It's been a little bit quieter for Team Liquid so far in this matchup. Um, but that's not, you know, him being slow or anything like that. It's very much just the rest of Team Liquid picking up the pace. And he hasn't been bad by any stretch of the imagination. Done his job uh, quite beautifully. Once they move on to defense, this could be uh, perhaps where he really picks things up. If he gets a big flank in somewhere in this round, that could be huge in a tide-turning moment for this round. Um, but you also talk about this around number seven. It's going to be wherever the team would want to go. They've got no restrictions on bomb sites, so they should be somewhere where they're relatively comfortable. And uh, Evil Geniuses, I mean, they've done pretty well in terms of just getting to the building. They're already inside the cigar and piano. Yeah, I mean... Team Liquid have basically said we don't need to worry about Cigar at all. So you put up the Denial, which is where you see the Kaid Electric Claws on the wall that separates the far back store and the bathroom from Piano. And it's basically impossible to take care of those without a Twitch. You're going to have to go underneath and rely on having your IQ do her job. So wherever Necrox is, is going to be of the utmost importance. It's almost like you think you have more control than you actually do. It puts NVK in a position where, without an ACOG, he tries to take a fight and loses it to Moringa. The smoke walked away with that one. Palu playing with the double ADS inside a bathroom means that it's going to be virtually impossible for him to get flushed out, given what we have from EG now that the Zofia is gone. And he's going to play very aggressively on it. That shotgun is a you know, one-shot kill at the correct range and he's just going to sit and wait. Palu has long-range coverage. Liquid have an advantage in a 5v4. You've got Yokai drones up to support the push going in towards the bomb sites. So Palu just needs to sit and wait. And as long as nobody really peeks out and loses their fights, well, it'll work really well. Oh, Evil Genius is losing a lot of players here, but they strike back. Mo and Necrox looking one piece. It's all on a Mo and the last one alive. But no, it's Liquid who come out on top once again. And I mean, a really fast push into this bomb site uh, from Evil Geniuses in the dying seconds of the round. As you mentioned, though, I mean, there were a lot of Liquid players lurking. There was a guy in the bathroom who was just waiting his time, right? Paulo eventually with a shotgun. Um, didn't need to do a whole lot because his teammates were there. But uh, Evil Geniuses, yeah, stalled out for a while. And then when the push happened, kind of fell apart. I mean, I wouldn't even say there really was a push. It was more like a let's just go for broke, right? Once NVK was down, you lost, you know, your four pieces of disruption. Two explosive, two of the actual concussion blasts as well. And it really put EG at a disadvantage to try to clear out those ADSs. It also put them at a disadvantage to push down to Heaven and Cocktail. A lot of teams will stack up ACOGs down by Cocktail and Heaven, which is the new balcony that's over by the Cocktail side of things. Uh, a good example of that, you know, shoot a couple holes in the wall, play all the way that far back, and you'll be able to see down towards the humidor and the door into Cigar. And very similar to Bank upstairs on that top floor CEO Defenders defense, when you're running a Cocktail defense, attackers. 
on cafe, you almost always need at least one ACOG, possibly two, just for good measure. You're gonna see an, either a Maestro or an Echo almost 100% of the time, possibly a Kaid and then maybe a Dock, depending on where your utility is at on, on defense. I, I really cannot get over how poorly that execute was from EG. Mo doing his best, but it, it, I was wrong. I thought that Mo was gonna entry and just stealthily lurk his way up. The play from EG was to simply drop Red Hatch, try to take control of Piano, and move over from there. You had no ability on EG to be able to take out the Kaid Electric Claws that were sitting or placed on the wall inside of Piano. So you have to open up the wall that's next to the bar back store that leads you in the cocktail. And you're basically funneled into the position where we saw two yokais watching very intently and a smoke playing inside a bar back store and a mute playing in the bathroom, both of whom have the same shotgun that will kill you at one shot. The Evil Geniuses thought the late round didn't work too well for them. They could just take this very, very quickly and end it before it gets there. The bomb site is downstairs on that first floor, and this lineup could go very, very quickly if EG wishes to. They've got a lot of fragging potential in both NVK, Mo, and Geo picking up some strong guns on the attacker side of things. We've got good support from Necrox to try to pull out these players and figure out where they're at very quickly. And then Young still on that hard support. Doesn't seem like that's the way EG want to go, though. I mean, despite the fact that they could go aggressive with this lineup, they have a lot of fragging potential. Seems like they want to use these uh, phone calls to more so get onto those top floors, clear out any roamers that Team Liquid might have up here. Um, also possible uh, EG wouldn't have known which bombsite they were going to, but still, uh, for them to be taking this a little bit slowly, perhaps it means that they're uh, not quite confident enough to be able to take some sort of a rush strategy. I mean, EG likes playing Lion and Tokabi with Necrox rocking both of those operators. And I mean, it works really well when you do have the fragging potential that EG has, as you said. And look at the guns also. You know, EG has a very powerful lineup at being able to just win gunfights, which is something they really haven't been doing outside of NVK so far. Lots of tools and a very annoying kit that EG is going to have to do, or, you know, is going to have at their disposal here. First phone call's already gone off, and all it's done is really net you a, a fraction of control on that second floor. I don't think EG is really aware of the positioning of Liquid up here, as it appears that there are three members of EG situated on this second floor. Mo droning himself in because he doesn't know, nor do his teammates know, of where exactly Liquid is playing. This is very bad for EG, and unless they can get that information very quickly, they're going to be at a huge disadvantage. The good news is that because they've got so much destruction, especially soft destruction, well, they're able to take out most of those floorboards. And because of this, they're going to push back Liquid inside of the actual site. A lot more horizontal roaming for a Liquid than what we saw from Evil Geniuses on this bomb site. Right, they're kind of staying away from a pop with their phone calls going off. It's not the end of the world for those roamers because they're so far, uh, they're so far off the bomb site. Right, probably Evil Geniuses, unless there's somebody flanking from behind, aren't going to find anybody. We do see a couple of outlines here, and certainly I think Palu, somebody's going to be able to hear his phone call going off. Eventually, however, it will end. And there's 40 seconds with 10 players alive in the server. Evil Genius doesn't need to start making something happen soon. He's player on Staircase, and he's going to win this gunfight. He kicks on in, can't get the second one. No, it's a trade. Sexy kick on top. Palu, the first one to fall inside of this round. So that's a trade. Jaeger for a Twitch. Basically, just good guns on both sides. We can take off the board. A big peek in from Moringa. He's not going to be able to get the kill, but his teammate Nesk lands one with a C4. It's Evil Genius is barreling in with three in a row. All of a sudden, Nesk is left in a one on three, and he's got no hope. Envy DK is there and Evil Geniuses are not out of it yet. They take round eight and it's a 6-2 scoreline. A swift push from EG is really the decider there. That's really all it is, is once they were able to take Moringa out of action, EG barreled in three of them. I think the word you used was barreled. And they had full control of the site. Nesk alone with the loadout that he has is capable in a 1v3, but they weren't giving him an inch because once you take Kitchen, there's only a couple ways back in. That's it. And you know how easily you can guard them. You've got three people. It's really effortless for the attackers to be able to box out the defender from being able to come back in when you're in a 1v3 situation as a defender. So Kitchen doesn't really work the way that Liquid wants. That's okay. It comes down to the wire. And we're going to see a second floor bomb site for the very first time. Reading defender, Emerge after the rework of Cafe. And a lot of teams like it very much. You can sit inside of Reading. You're nestled pretty safely because there's not a lot of soft destruction that can be occurring to actually push you out of that room. You've got the standard, you know, fireplace slash dining, depending on how you want to call it. That is, you know, not usually where the attackers want to push on the old, you know, mining and dining site. They would always go through the train section or the mining section because it was always the preferred site for a diffuse plant. As it was, I would say, and I think a lot of people would agree, just generally weaker in terms of defender capability and relies an awful lot on luck from time to time, and Mira, and Mira being off the board makes that particular area a lot harder to defend. So when you look at a reading defense, 
It's going to function very similarly to attacking Cocktail. You're going to want to try and drop him through Red Hatch. You're going to try and take the Nano quickly, make sure there's nobody playing from above. Continue to push on over towards the actual Cocktail portion of the map, and then maybe do some minor soft destruction that you can do to try and make it uncomfortable for the people playing and reading. But a lot of teams won't keep a body in reading. They won't keep somebody playing actively in there. They'll have them playing down maybe by pillars or playing on the brown stairs on that first floor. Evil Genius is not changing anything up on attack, and as we're seeing here in Pillars, yes. Um, sort of what you were talking about a little bit earlier. Um, nobody there at the moment for either team, but yes, it's kind of where the bomb site is at. You've got Team Liquid players who are up on this top floor. You've got Echo um, using his drones up there, Sexy Kick being control of that. And so when Evil Genius is finally get on into this bomb site, perhaps that's something they're going to have to deal with. They're entering into the roof at the moment and entering a piano uh, very shortly after that. So here comes NVK, and they want to really clear out anybody who might be up on this top floor for Team Liquid. They've got a couple of roamers up here, but there's a drone in front of NVK, and hopefully this combination, this coordination should be there for Evil Geniuses. Again, NVK probably been the best so far for EG in this matchup. Uh, in terms of the fragging department, he's been all right. Mo as well, though, right there to back him up. If NDK loses his gunfight, you can go in for the trade, and you're pretty happy about that. Geo there to complete the trio as they're continuing to try to roam clear here in Cigar. Opening up uh, more of this top floor, but there's been a lot of time wasted. You haven't found too many of this roamers. So you've got people up top here. The phone call went out for just a moment, but it didn't seem to last too long. It didn't seem to have a huge effect because nobody from Oakland were very close in terms of the roamers. They have a lot of intel on Evil Geniuses now, and this could be scary. Moringo, with the very first kill, comes out with the C4. Shuts down Mo as he tried to entry. Sexy Kate going to try to survive as long as possible from this top floor. A little bit risky for an Echo to be playing so far aggressively. And with these phone calls, too, it's going to be very, very difficult for him. But we'll see how the rest of this plays out. Evil Genius is taking their time. This is a hill that Liquid wants to die on, though. As, as you mentioned, why is the Echo being this aggressive? It's because it's do or die on this third floor. Ness, as anybody you want with a good gun in their hand, it's going to be him. He's going to have to fall back, though. But he gets PSK! Oh, to the rescue! And alongside Moringa, they make that one real swift. Team Liquid.